heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, this is Lady Cheryl. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you seven steps to grow tomatoes in a hot climate during the summer. Now, I live in Zone 8A, Mesquite, Texas, and we can have temperatures as high as 108 degrees during the summer. So, I'm going to share with you some practices I have uh, put into place uh, during my 30 plus years gardening. Okay, I'm going to share these tips with you right now. Let's get started. First thing you need to do after you have grown your seedlings or perhaps you purchased transplants, you want to get them in the ground or container or raised garden bed early. And you want to select a um, variety that is uh, heat tolerant. It's very crucial that you select heat tolerant uh, tomato plants if you want to be successful at growing them during a very hot summer especially garden zones eight and above okay so now that we have the transplants in the ground let's move on to step two okay so now we're ready to move on to step two in this step you need to make sure that your uh tomato plants are secure and you want to make sure that you get the branches off of the ground now you could do this in the beginning when you first transplant your uh, seed leaves into a raised garden bed, a container, or directly into the ground. But make sure that they're secure so that as they start to develop and produce fruit, they won't be so heavy and your fruit won't uh, be uh, on the ground or your branches won't be uh, breaking off because of too much weight. Okay. Okay, if you look right here, you will see that I tied this twine right here to this T-post. And I'm gonna go around on the other side and do the other tomato plant. You can also use uh, tomato cages, those wire cages that they sell everywhere. Whatever you prefer, just make sure that you get the branches off of the ground and have something to secure the weight. Before I do that, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take off all of these bottom leaves and you guys know why I do that so that they can breathe so that they can get plenty of sunshine through there I also do this to improve the air circulation which will lower the temperature and the main thing here is you don't want to get a fungus on your tomato plants I guess I should say two main things lower the temperature and don't get a fun fungus okay guys I didn't have to prune a lot off the bottom of here because the branches were staked up the time that I transplanted them. The cages were put in place. So that's a tip that I'd like to offer you is to put your cages and your stakes in position when you do your transplants. To remove any leaves that appear to have insect damage, or some of them could be damaged from the wind because we have extremely high winds. But just in case there are some insects around that mulch hiding, I'm going to put some diatomaceous earth uh, in that area. Okay. Now, Let's move on to step five. You want to apply your fertilizers as needed. Now, I don't use chemicals, but if you do, that's, you know, up to you. I feed my tomato plants comfrey tea, fish emulsion and seaweed tea, as well as compost tea and worm castings. And once a month, I give them some garden line to prevent blossom end rot. The next step is to find a way to make sure that your tomato plant's roots 
get deeply watered and very slowly watered. I'm going to use what you see in this picture. They're called olas. Okay, so here are the olas. There's one right there, and there's one right there that I installed in this garden bed on March the 30th. And I have a video I made about it, and I will link it in the description box. And these olas will deeply water the roots of my plants. They contain or can hold two gallons of water. And so when this unglazed pot slowly seeps out the water, you know you're going to get your roots watered. So you can either do this. Some people, and I've done this before, take gallon jugs and put tiny holes in the jugs at the bottom with a, with a nail, maybe one or two holes, fill it up, bury it in the ground, and that will slowly leak out and it will make sure that your roots of your tomato plants and pepper plants get watered. Also, you can do like a drip irrigation some of you guys already have that. I've seen people install them in the entire uh, raised garden beds or soil uh, rows that they, when they do in-ground planting. Or you can um, have a uh, sprinkler system on low. Whatever you decide, just try to keep the leaves of your plant from getting wet because that's how you get, you know, blight and all other type of funguses, and especially the leaves on the ground. As you can see, we cleaned those out yesterday. Okay, so I say, if you are like me and living on a fixed income, use what you have until you can get what you want. For years, I used a milk jug, guys, or orange juice jug and just put a few holes at the bottom of it. Okay. Final step. As you can see here, I have a shade cloth. Let me step back and show you how it is covering this garden bed. And I have them attached, well, I'm getting ready to attach them to these T-posts. I leave them here all year long and I take this little clip right here, the same ones that you saw my son attaching the frost cloth in a previous video on the apple trees. So you just wanna take this like this, clip it on, and it's secure. When you have high winds, you might wanna put another one here. This 50% shade cloth will lower the temperature in this garden bed about five degrees which will give me a little bit more uh, time to grow the tomato plants. And you don't have to worry about it. Look, I'm, going, I'm up under here, okay? Here's the ceiling. I'm up under here. So, so you can see these little holes. I'm gonna put my fingernail through it. See that? So water will come right in. Don't worry about it. You're just filtering the sun, which will lower the temperature in the bed, okay? Your plants will get adequate sun. Trust me on this. I've had people to email me, you know, in previous videos, and want that sun to grow, blah, blah. No, baby, not here in Texas, not in a gardening zone 8A where we have a higher temperature, okay? So now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna su support this cloth by putting in my little basket here, a uh, box here of uh, clips that I keep in my grow room. See, just like that. Now, I don't put it, the clip, let me show you. And you can get smaller sizes too. I have two sizes, actually I have about three. You can take this clip, I'm gonna turn it around here. This is an old rusty one. And you can uh, put it that way. But you can see I only have about two feet to walk through this walkway. So I don't wanna be bumping into this clip. So I position it where it would not be in my way. I'm going to put another one right here. Okay? Then I'm going to go around and take three more clips with me. And I'm going to walk around here. 
and I'm going to put one right here so I can get through without being interrupted or I can clip it this way as long as it's not in the pathway for me to get through there okay all right so I don't need to keep showing you that just know make sure you have some strong spring type clips now I'm going to show you something when I get to the other side right here if the tomatoes get taller than the seven feet post. I'm up under here, right guys, you see this? You can take a two by four and stake it up just like this, which will give you more room to grow for your plants. I've done that before, okay? All right. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna quickly summarize the whole step for growing these tomatoes successfully. First thing you're gonna do is select heat tolerant tomatoes for your gardening zone. After you've grown your tomatoes or you bought transplants, you wanna get them in the ground and support them with stakes or cages. Step three, you wanna continue always all summer long to prune the lower leaves. Don't let the leaves touch the ground. Step four, periodically you wanna check for insects, especially the uh, tomato hornworm, and five, constantly check to see if for indications that you need fertilizer. Step six, you can do this just one time. Install your olas or some type of deep root irrigation system. And number seven, always check your shade clocks. Make, make sure that they're secure at all times. This concludes this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now. The end.